Welcome to the City Rev Life Podcast. We're glad you joined us today. My name is Rebecca, and I have with me today Ariana Reed, the Executive Director of Hope Women's Center. Today we're going to talk about what Hope Women's Centers is, as well as how the church can partner with organizations like them, and how you as an individual, what you can do to advance the heart of Jesus in this conversation. So Ariana, tell us a little bit about Hope Women's Centers and the services it provides. Absolutely. So Hope Women's Centers is a medical pregnancy center, and we provide free and confidential services to women and their partners who find themselves in unexpected or unplanned pregnancies. And uh, those services are pregnancy tests, ultrasounds. We provide options information to be able to talk with that woman or that couple about parenting. We can talk about adoption and we can talk about abortion. Mm. Um, Just because a lot of the women that do come in are really wrestling about what to do and abortion is top of mind. Mm. And so we get to educate them regarding that. We also do provide STD testing and additional resources for them. But then also we have a component called Hope Restored and it's for any woman and man who have experienced an abortion in their past. Mm. And so we get to walk with them for a set amount of weeks. Um, We also do a retreat to be able to walk them through healing Mm. um, from their past abortion experience. And it's just beautiful what happens uh, once they walk through that and the healing that they experience. Wow, that's really great that you really have a holistic approach to minister to that population. It's not just uh, the frontline line line of defense, they're in the situation, um, which is a very key, important part of what you do, but you also take care before, during, and after um, either side of where they fall on that particular spectrum to really wrap around them and... um, that's, that's an incredible way that you minister to that, that yeah. population. Yeah, absolutely. And when you talk about holistic, um, the example that I like to give, an illustration, is that the church is the ship, mm. the mothership. <laughs> and so um, Hope Women's Centers is the raft. And so mm. we have on this raft, we have trained and licensed professionals that are out in the water throwing these life preservers to women and men who find themselves in unexpected pregnancies. Mm. And we bring them into that raft and being able to provide them with the the services that are at no cost to them Mm. and and then our whole goal is to then you know get them onto that raft and then connect them to the mothership the big ship which is the church and uh, we know how important discipleship is um, especially within our community Um, just being able to connect these women and their partners with the church Mm -hmm. a lot of people do need support and um, it could also be that single mom that really needs that additional help and and resources that's great So as women walk through the door or, you know, uh, men, their partners, um, what kind of um, turnaround do you see? Do you regularly see them come back? Are they um, have multiple visits? What's kind of the uh, rhythm of of a person when they walk through your door. Yeah. Well, sometimes we do have people come back, um, for a second time. Um, but typically it is their first or second pregnancy Mm -hmm. and they just weren't planning on the situation happening. And so we get to provide them with free and confidential services. Mm -hmm. And it really is amazing to Mm -hmm. be able to help them in their decision-making process. But also we do provide a program called hope restored. And that is for anybody who has an, has had an abortion in their Mm -hmm. past and we get to walk them through healing. Mm. And it's just beautiful to see what happens after they complete that that study. Wow, yeah. that's a great resource. So it's not just this one line of defense where when someone's at a crucial point in the decision-making process that you're really trying to holistically wrap around that entire population. So whether before, during, after, you really have services to meet the needs. Absolutely, absolutely. And I always like to also just share briefly, you know, uh, as we're connecting, with City Rev and other churches is Hope Women Centers is like coming um, on a raft from the big mothership, so mm. to speak. And so we're in this raft with trained and licensed professionals to be able to provide services to 
uh, women who have unexpected pregnancies. And so we're throwing this life preserver out to them yeah. to be able to bring them in and to be able to help them. And ultimately, our whole goal is for us then uh, in that raft to be able to connect with the ship, wow. which is the church, to be able to help connect these women and these men to the church for discipleship. Wow. That's such a great way to look at it. You're kind of that that life preserver, like you're saying, when they're in the midst of that turmoil or that situation that just yeah. feels uncertain, much like being alone in an ocean kind of thing. Yeah, and, but ultimately, you're trying to connect them to the local church as well as give them support in that moment. Absolutely. That's really great. And that's mm -hmm. an important to note, you know, wow, the local church, we have such a hand in that whole journey. Um, the stakes are high for us to really get this right, how to partner well um, with not only organizations like yours, but with the people. Um, and you're constantly trying to bridge that, that gap for us. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about even just your story. The stakes are high for a church to get this right. I think you'd even mentioned in another conversation that I think last year, about 80% of those who walked through your doors chose life. Yeah. And so that is a huge success rate and just another great reminder of, wow, this is on the front lines, uh, an important discussion to get right. So how can we as the local church, even though we're not the ones in those counseling rooms having those discussions, how can we as a local church get this right so that we can continue to further that success rate, um, even improve even higher? Yeah. I think the biggest thing, Rebecca, is that we are a people of love. And that's what the Bible calls us to do is to love. And it's not just loving somebody who's loving us back. It's loving somebody who we may not be able to relate to, who, who we may um, see ourselves as completely different from. And um, the reason why I say that too is even in the church, unfortunately, um, we're, we don't necessarily always see love. Mm -hmm. And I know you had asked me just about my story and just a, a little quick story that I can share with you of an experience that I had within um, uh, the church that I used to go to when I was in grad school. Um, so they ended up doing a cardboard testimony. And I'm not sure um, how many people have heard of cardboard testimonies, but it's an opportunity to share what God has done in your life. And so I was asked to participate. And so I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to put on my cardboard? And mm -hmm. I really felt led to share my story, something that I had not at the time publicly shared with others. And so what I did is on one side, I wrote abortion. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, I flipped it and I wrote forgiven. Mm -hmm. And it was so powerful um, what God did in that moment. But I also do remember when I finished doing that and it was the end of the service, there was a couple that I was very close to in the church. It was an older couple. And I went to speak to them afterwards and they literally just turned their backs and walked away. Yeah. And that was the last time prior to me doing my cardboard testimony was the last time I ever had a conversation with them. Oh. And, um, I absolutely felt judged sure. and they didn't know my story. They didn't know what what I experienced. Sure. Um, and just like the women that come into our clinics, not everybody is openly saying, yes, I want to have an abortion. A lot of women mm. are really wrestling sure. with that decision. Some of them are actually also forced. They're forced to have an abortion against their right. will. And, and they feel like they can't speak up. Uh, they're, they're hurting inside and they're like screaming out, I don't want to do this. But yet they're, they're being brought to the abortion clinic. Yeah. And so love I believe is part of the solution mm -hmm. that we as the church would love, but there's so many great resources for anybody who says, you know what? I want to be a part of making a difference within my church. Mm -hmm. And so, um, there's a program called making life disciples and an individual could walk through that training okay. so that they're equipped. You mm -hmm. can be equipped to be able to help somebody who comes up to you and says, I don't know what to do, but I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a powerful tool yeah. and a great way to equip the church. That's great. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I appreciate you sharing your, your t testimony and your story that takes a lot of courage to kind of bring part of your past circumstances, but you're constantly dipping into that experience and helping these women and helping these couples uh, wrestle through with that. And you know what that feels like. Yeah. Um, and even just the experience of what happened in the local church on that time, you know, I think that that 
grips my heart as the local church to make sure that we don't unintentionally kind of polarize the pew, you know, with, okay, there's people over here with like-minded lifestyles and decisions that reflect those that are similar to mine. And then when there's, um, a situation that looks different than my life or my values or what the, what I think the Bible teaches, we can unintentionally marginalize those who look different than us. And in doing so, when they're hurting, they might look outside of the church for help. And gosh, yeah. don't that would just be a complete loss if we didn't win that battle right there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Bringing people in and having such a place of acceptance yeah. where then those who are hurting run to the church to get that um, hurt met and that need met. And it sounds like that curriculum that you're describing yeah. really equips us as the local church to know how to do that absolutely in, in different ways. So I appreciate you sharing that. You know, in preparation for <clears throat> this uh, podcast today, I was reading through the scripture passage in John where it talks about the the woman caught in adultery that was brought to Jesus. And, you know, not every woman who finds herself unexpectedly pregnant is an adulterer. And that we throw that word around like such a scarlet letter sin. But I think the principle out of that passage is so relevant here and how Jesus responds to her. And it's such a cue that we can take as believers. Yeah. Essentially, the Pharisees bring this woman to him and essentially say the the law says that we should stone her. What do you say we should do? And they kind of challenge Jesus in that way. And his famous words where he says, you know, he who is without sin should cast the first stone. Yeah. And then one by one, um, each man and individual leaves. And um, the only one left is Jesus. And they, you kind of get this picture. They kind of drop their proverbial stones, if you will, the, their stone of judgment, their stone of self-righteousness, of condemnation, of accusation that they have ready to just throw at her. They're just waiting mm-hmm. for the green light, right? Yeah. And she's left standing with the only one who could rightfully cast a stone at her and he doesn't he doesn't even pick one up and it's his grace and his love and his acceptance that compels her to sin no more and that encounter with Jesus I think is such a beautiful description of exactly what you're describing Ariana how to meet someone in a place of decision like that with such love and acceptance so that they're compelled with grace to be able to walk through the mm-hmm. next steps and um, hopefully reflect the heart of Jesus in their circumstances. Yes. That's awesome. Now tell me, that's kind of a biblical example of what your heartbeat is for this mission. Tell us a little bit about, is there a modern day example where you've seen that walk out, where that has played out in your office? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see it every day, which is, it's beautiful. Um, and just to touch on what you had mentioned, not every woman is an adulterer, right? Mm-hmm. Who's caught in, who's in that situation. And we do have women that come in that are married, Mm. and Mm. they're in a tough spot. Um, uh, Just to share an example of uh, a woman who came into our clinic, um, she already had a teenage child, (laughs) and Mm. this was something that she was not expecting. Mm. Um, Had a good job, um, but again, she has a teenager. She's not in a place where she wants to start over. She is looking forward to the next few years Uh, of her life where her child is going to be going off to college. But here she is now in a situation where she finds herself pregnant and she came into our clinic just to find out. Mm. (laughs) And when she found out, um, she was not happy. And, um, unfortunately she wanted to have an abortion, but we thank God that her coming to us a couple of times, we provided all of our services to her, the pregnancy tests, the ultrasound, and more importantly, we equipped her. We provided her with the information on abortion, what that looks like, whether it was the surgical or the abortion pill. And Mm -hmm. it's just so important for people to know that and understand that, that sometimes we run to have an abortion, Mm -hmm. yet we don't know what the the physical ramifications could be, but also we we forget the emotional, the the mental, and the spiritual effects. And these are effects that, yes, God can heal, but you never forget. And I'm a woman who Mm. has to walk through that every day for the rest of my life, but also knowing that God has healed me 
but you never forget. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I, yeah, that's a good point. And it's, you're mingling that love and mercy with that education for them and you're giving yes. them resources so that they can make an informed decision. And I, I appreciate that story. She's a, she was a single mom, right? Yes, single mom. So the you know the proverbial stones that are being just thrown at her situation, the things like, uh, I have to start over again. What if I have backslide on my career? What if I have to depend again on a system to help provide for me and my child? That feels like backwards in the self-sufficient journey of in, in, independence that I'm on and wanting to champion you know, her, her, her journey and really having to cast those stones aside and really take up the love and the mercy and the grace. And it sounds like in that moment she received that and was able to compel her to make a decision that uh, chose life. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just beautiful what God did, because even in that conversation with her, she, she even said, I want to get back on track with the Lord and connected mm. to a church. And we see that that is so powerful when they can get connected to a church. Yeah. And she did choose life mm-hmm. and we praise God for that. And so it's just a beautiful testimony of, of what God can do. And we see him doing that every day. Yeah. And again, these are women that are coming in, some that are adamant about having an abortion, some that are like, I don't know what to do. I'm so so confused. I'm fearful. I'm pregnant. I, I still live at home with my parents. What are they going to say? Right. They could be the pastor of the church. They could be a deacon in the church. Sure. Um, and, and, and now they find themselves pregnant and terrified to tell their parents. Sure. But I tell all of the patients that come in, there is help and hope mm. for you. Uh, and I love the fact that we provide these services at no cost to you. Mm. And uh, there is no judgment. We welcome every woman and her partner with open arms. We're here to serve you and to help you in your journey and know that you are not alone. Mm. And um, I just encourage you to stay connected to your church because um, there you have that village experience. You have that community that that's going to walk with you in the process. Well, that's a great resource to know if you are a person who finds yourself in that situation to know that, that that's a, a resource that we can reach out to. We're going to include actually the website to Hope Women's Centers in our description so that if you personally are walking through something like that, that is an instant resource you can go to as well as, the, of course, um, our local church. But also if you find yourself as a spectator or a uh, a witness to someone walking through that. What can you do? Obviously, those resources you can share, things like um, po- um, pointing them to hope, pointing them to resources. Use your social media, share this podcast, um, go to the description, find links to all of these different resources. But I think, too, just on a practical level, as an individual doing the heart work and what are our proverbial stones that we can drop mm-hmm. that we're so ready to cast at a problem like this? Are we, are we more willing to judge than show grace? Can we find compassion instead of condemnation? Yeah. Can we um, give acceptance rather than accusation? What are the ways that we can let our hearts be um, you know, tilled and the soil of our hearts be really churned to be able to just drop those stones that we're so ready to throw at this problem rather than quickly run to Jesus and his grace and his love and his mercy. And so it seems so trite or um, impractical, but I think the heart level uh, is really an important step in this conversation. Share this podcast, listen to it with someone else, have a conversation with someone, um, as well as if God in bring someone your way in your path, then this will be a great resource to have as a tool in your tool belt. So absolutely. anything else that we are missing that you'd like to share? No, I'm just excited to be here with you. And I, I thank you, Rebecca. I thank City Rev Church. Um, you guys are making a difference in your community and, and having these conversations because they're not easy. Sure. And um, a lot of women do find themselves in their church. Uh, even statistically speaking, four out of 10 uh, have attended church at least once a month um, and they've had an abortion. Mm. And so um, we know that the need is right here in our community and right here in our church. And so I thank you all and Pastor Roby for having these conversations and just letting your congregants know that there is help and there's hope out there and that they can connect with one of your leaders and connect with Hope Women's Centers if they find themselves in that situation or a friend or family member. 
Absolutely. So thank you. Absolutely. We're glad to do it. And listen, thanks for joining us. Feel free to share this podcast um, on your social media or anyone else that you think might appreciate it. And we'll see you back next time. Thank you for joining us on City Rev Life. You can subscribe to this podcast, rate and review wherever you're listening to this. And we love it when you share it with your friends on social media. For more videos and content, go ahead and check us out at cityrev.org slash podcast or download our City Rev Church app. Have a great day.